So welcome, welcome to the International Dragon Thunder Summit 2023. And today I am with Fiona Robertson, who is in France, of all places. So how did she end up there? Maybe she'll tell us. <laughs> so Fiona, so uh, maybe you want to explain who you are first. Uh, I'm Fiona Robertson. <laughs> That's it. That's it. Um... I work with souls and I work with dragons and I really consider myself as a dragon soul. And I just love the idea of this whole summit. So bringing, bringing out <laughs> as much as we can about the dragons, because there's so much and there's so much that we forget along the way as well. Um, and I was brought to France, by the way. Uh, <laughs> I, I was woken up with a voice probably in about 2000. And I'd just gone through a separation and I just moved out, moved into another house and had my dog and my business that I was hanging on to for dear life. And I remember waking up one morning to this voice. And I don't know to this day if it was my soul or if it was a dragon, but it was a loud voice basically saying, do you want to still be doing this in five years time? And my immediate response was no. Considering that I was hanging on to dear life to this business that was who I was, it was my identity. And I turned around and kind of went, no. And then the voice came again. Do you want to still be doing this in three years time? And I went, no, no, with conviction. Yeah. And then do you still want to be doing this in one year's time? And I was like, no. So what's coming then if this, if these are the questions and then silence, you know, like you're sitting up in bed at five o'clock in the morning and it's silence and you're like, don't want to miss anything. Don't want to miss anything. Maybe something else is going to give me a clue of what's going on. Nothing. So you get up, you go to work, and you think, can't concentrate today. Well, I'm just going to shuffle a few papers around. And I went, okay, show me then. What, what, what's my next step? Mm. So I had a magazine in front of me. It was a women's magazine. and it could have been an Oprah magazine. I don't know. <laughs> and I said, right, just going to let it fall open. And if there's a message, then you've got to give me a message. So it fell open. And then the right hand side of the page was this big advert about life coaching. And I went, well, OK, is that what you want me to do? And I just kind of got this. Well, I'll just play with it and just see. So I said, well, I'll only go if they've got this particular weekend free. And of course, I rang and they did. And I was like, all right, OK, and that's what I'm going to be doing then. But I didn't really feel that. I mean, I'd already been doing Reiki, I'd already been doing healing. And I was just like, I knew that it was all like a stepping stepping stone. Yeah. So I went and did it. And it took about a year, a year to do this you know, course. And basically, you found out so much about yourself. And yeah, we went and walked across fire. We, you know, we did all sorts of tough stuff. And then by the end of that, I'd really worked out. I didn't want to be living this life in Oxford in the UK anymore and I was like what's next then where am I going and it just took me along you know step by step by step so I ended up buying a ticket what do I always wanted to do what do I always wanted to do you know, I'm always questioning and I ended up taking a year's travel ticket with a rucksack so wow. rid of all the makeup and the hairspray and the high heels and the suits and the jackets <laughs> and went traveling with just a rucksack like if I can't carry it I can't take it and I ended up going around the world for a year but insisting that I would follow my guidance insisting that I would follow something hmm. follow the flow I think people call it now yeah and I, I went around the world and I did my Reiki and things just fell into place and I did my master's and I met great people I remember even before I met her, I was sitting on the steps of a youth hostel in Cape Town, having complete trust that everything was going to walk, work out fine. Didn't lock my bag once and everybody's like, oh, you've got to lock your bag. You've got to know. Didn't lock my bag. Ringing this woman that somebody had given me the telephone number who was a Reiki master up in Prince Albert. Thinking, I can't get hold of her. Why can't I get hold of her? She's so difficult to get hold of. Like, if this is meant to be, well, maybe it's not meant to be then. And I just got, write it differently. So journal it out, write it differently. This woman is so easy to get hold of. That instant, she ran me back. And I went, oh, we're playing with something on a different level here. <laughs> and then that's just the way I kind of carried on going. If I wanted, If I wanted to find out how to get down the West Coast of Australia, I was like, 
what do I want? This is so easy to find it. Somebody else who's in a car, maybe there's another car, maybe we're in a bit of a convoy and it's fun. The next day I'd found a space in a car that we went down. When I hit home, when I came back to the UK, I was just like, I don't want to live like this anymore. Mm. And I'm frightened if I stay here, I'll end up doing the same things. Yeah. So then it was a caravan. It was with the guy that I'd met when we were going, when I was traveling. Like, whoa, we'll just suck it and see. Where do we want to go? And I went, yeah, I have, I have this image that I did when I did my life course training of there was a particular light, a particular kind of house. There was kids in the garden. There was dogs. There was chickens. I can see it. So we were guided through France. And my partner at the time was going, how do you know when you found it? How do you know when you found it? I said, I'll know. <laughs> <laughs> Ended up, after looking at about 30 houses when we found the area we wanted to live in, in this village and I found the exact house that I'd seen in this vision of my perfect day and anyway I ended up buying the house and all the rest of it and and this is th these are the kind of stories that I've written about in Practical Magic about how you make things happen mm -hmm. and the more you make things happen the more I realized that I was being I could jump without a safety net and Later then, I realized that I'd, I'd had this huge dragon eye looking into my world, saying nothing, but just looking and observing, waiting for me to be ready to come full in. Mm. And then you realize that you're brought to a village where 600 witches were burned. Cool. cool. And then I think, well, I wasn't one that was burnt. I think I was drowned. Oh, my goodness, that's why I used to have all those dreams as a kid of being drowned. Repeatedly, these dreams would come in. And I know I had three witches in my room as a little girl. So it's just that oh, everything's, everything's falling into place because I've opened myself up to looking at things differently. Beautiful. The dragons are so did, just amazing. So when did when did you first meet a dragon then? Um, it's very difficult to pinpoint because mm. they might have always been there. I do remember having this. It must have been in a, a, a meditation or a channeling or something that I was doing even before I knew I was channeling. Great big. I looking into my world and I remember drawing it because I often sketch things when I've finished meditation or a journey or something like that and then I forgot all about it mm -hmm. and then when we started on the, <laughs> the journey of COVID I was asking well now what because I can't run my detox retreats and I can't have clients come and stay with me and I don't know how long this is going what, what do you want from me what am I doing what, what do you want and I heard this voice again that just went, write your book, write your book, write your book. And in the back of my mind, I'd had this book lingering, boiling away. And I thought I knew what it was about. Um, so I, I flushed out all the chapters as I was shown that story, then that story, then that story. And then, and then a girlfriend of mine said, would do you want to see if there's like a deeper issue to do with your book? I just feel because of who you are that there's like there's there's a message in there. Um, so we kind of went on some journeyed meditations and I went down into this cave and I, I just met, I met Serafina and then I met another one and then I met another one and then I met another one. And their messages always are coming through to me about breaking the spell that you're under mm -hmm. as a human and reclaiming your power so that you can create your own future. And they keep repeating to me so many messages. But the basic one, that Serafina, the, the first dragon that I met, the matriarch, she basically says, you don't know how powerful you are as a human. You have no idea how powerful you are. And I think everybody who's talking to dragons or bringing dragons in, we're beginning to understand <clears throat> that we're even just tickling the surface and just dabbling 
And what we were saying before is just that you just you just open, you get an idea and you run with it. Mm-hmm. But you don't know where it's going. <laughs> true. That's true. Huh? Yeah. It's like you are being so beautifully maneuvered. Mm. I remember I was I'm living in France and my, my boys are growing up and they're, they're teenagers now, but I was driving along and every now and again, you know, like you have to kind of go, what is it that I'm doing? What do you want from me? What is it, you know, when, when things go quiet for a bit, what is it that you want? And I just got the words vision source. And I laughed out loud because that was the name of my company in Oxford. Oh, wow. I used to sell cameras and monitors and lenses and cables. And I used to put solutions together for people. But basically, the cameras used to go into places that humans couldn't go because they couldn't see. So nuclear power stations, extreme sports, um, factories, um, intertunnels, air conditioning, all sorts, you know, underwater, everything. And I went, vision sort? And they were like, yeah, it's the vision that source has for you. That's the readings that we want you to. And I'm like, well, I don't do readings. And they said, well, it's not you that does them. (laughs) You're just the voice for them. You're just the channel for them. And this is how I'm being led. And it's very difficult to explain to someone who isn't having the same sort of trust and experience with this um, of how this is all working. How we are evolving. And, you know, the messages that they've given to me, I've made into this deck of cards that they asked me to make 64 cards. So eight dragons, eight messages each, which is the evolution of how this works, of all going through the process. So you, you start with Serafina, who asks you, what is it that you want? But what do you really want? It's not like a millionaire or the money, because... We can't feel that. It's not real. You know, you're rolling around in paper and we just don't get it because it's like paper. So what do you want? You know, what are the feelings of it? So they're all about evoking your feelings. And then there's there's Tara, who's a beautiful sea green dragon. And she came to me when I'd been doing some readings on the beach. And um, we were kind of, I was like, okay. I, I I just knew she was with me. Kind of had an image of her and then I was ch- chatting away to her and asking questions and there was a dog at the other end of the beach barking its head off <laughs> would come over it was just pointed at me like and I was like okay we're gonna <laughs> we're gonna have a visitor and this dog was running around and the owner was like so sorry I'm so sorry it doesn't normally do that and I'm like yeah, kind of know why it's being <laughs> being the way it is. Um, you know, Tara is more about how you change your perception. So if you're looking at thing one way, how can you change and look at it at an, in another way? She's very much about, um, so if this is where you are now, call it stressed. You know, what's the opposite of that? You know, where where are we going to take you? How does it feel? Because unless we can feel it, you're always going to stay with with the original stress feeling or depression feeling or overwhelmed feeling or frustrated feeling. So she takes you on a journey up all the different steps. And so you can feel it every single place in your body. So you actually have a visceral experience of what the most stressful experience is and then the most relaxed experience is. So you've always got what their training is that you always come back to your safe place. Mm. There's always the safety zone. There's always this neutral. There's always like, if something's happening, you can always come back and say, where am I in all of this? Where am I in all of this? And you just, you just go neutral. This is when you become the observer and you become open to being the channel, being fed the information. Beautiful. <laughs> Raphael is the dragon after that. He's like the old professor. You imagine your perfect old professor and he's so precise and he's so patient and he's so, he wants details, 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 details. And he laughs and he said, you humans are funny. 
So you say you want something and you immediately go into what you don't want. So human conditioning, you immediately go into like, yeah, but I don't want this and I don't want that and I don't, okay. And it's, you also say, well, I just want money or I just want it to be a nice day or I just want to lose weight. And he's like, <sighs> details. Tell me the kind of person you want to be. What are they like? What do they look like? What do they feel like when you're with them? What's the day? Is there a wind? Is there a temperature? You know, like he wants to weave all the magnificent details of feeling alive. Whereas he's laughed and he says, we humans just leave everything to chance and we're lazy and we just wake up and kind of go, oh, another day. <laughs> <laughs> Luna Ray is probably the next one. She's, she's the goddess of helping you feel. Mm. She says, none of this is any good unless you can feel it. Humans, you are overthinking it. You are stuck in the struggle. You are for way too precious to be stuck in that struggle. But if you keep telling the same stories, you're going to keep feeling the same way. So if I... If I'm with someone and I'm coaching someone and they've been in abuse, for example, and it's affecting them on a physical level, because the, the more you think about something, it creates an entity on the body and it, it produces Ill, illness on the body to the extreme, obviously, as you know, as cancers and things like that. So if you keep telling the story and if you keep sealing the same thing, you keep you keep creating it. So how can you and feelings are much easier to change than your thoughts, than your beliefs. So you can just overcome all of that by feeling your way out of it so the humans have have um a very limited bandwidth of what they allow themselves to feel and so my question was are humans just frightened to feel this that she said they're terrified of feeling terrified because you think with with good feeling or you know where there's where there's joy there's pain or if I feel that much love, I'm going to feel that much pain. So we limit the amount of love that we allow ourselves because we are limiting the amount of pain. We keep blocking out the pain <clears throat> because we don't want to feel the pain. But that means we're living in a very narrow bandwidth of what, what we accept as our feelings. And she said, when we feel into you, it's like, one ten percent of what your full capacity is if you could feel the pain and the anger and the joy and the bliss and if it could all just humans she says hold on to and identify with whatever story they got what well, they've got going on the poverty the lack the pain the abuse the whatever the hurt the shame you know we identify with it well that's just who I am what the dragons are asking us to do is to release all of that and because I'm a detox queen I've been detoxing for years and I believe that's why the, the, the dragons are here as well because <laughs> everything was just blown open when you release something that's really kind of profound when you really get to the bottom of something um, there are huge physical consequences and Luna, Luna Ray is always laughing about those because your humans don't want to talk about that either but Fiona will because she's used to talking about poo <laughs> <laughs> but massive bowel movements massive peeing massive sweats lots and lots of sleep needed sometimes flu symptoms mm. because you're just so exhausted because you, oh, you finally let it all go let it go of the story and I'm saying to whoever's like let go of something and they're looking for something different they look 10 years younger and then and I'm like, you can't ever tell that story in the same way again, because you start repeating the, the, the chemical cycle, the chain reaction that goes on inside your body. And eventually it, it takes hold again. So the depression comes back and everything else. So she's funny because she says, you know, the feelings are just a frequency. They're just an energy that allow you can allow to flow in. And then you can allow yourself to let it go and go, oh, it's just an energy. It's not mine. Maybe it's someone else's energy that I'm, because we're all so much more empathic in this generation. <laughs> Each generation is more sensitive than the last. 
Mm. Yeah. And the kids in now are just absolutely brilliant. So dragon number five then is sovereign. And sovereign is a, a really beautiful purple dragon. I mean, there's they they're all they're all depicted in the cards that I was asked to write. So like this would be the eye of sovereign. Purple, just royal, regal. And then when you understand what your sovereignty is, your sovereignty is when you are truly and utterly at one with your soul. You're kind of equally soul and equally human. You're entwined both ways. You've you've let your left and right hemisphere of your bright brain operate so it's shared information. And you're communicating with your soul, so much so that if you go into the kitchen, you're kind of saying, what would we really like to eat? And you're waiting for inspiration rather than the human who's like, oh, I better eat those leftovers. <laughs> no one else will eat them. You know, so you're putting yourself last. So sovereign is always asking you to put the soul first. And you know when you're in your sovereign state because you feel just you're just taller. You just feel stronger, phenomenally strong on the inside. And nobody's criticism, judgment or bad behavior can touch you. Because you're just like, hmm, you've got that self-worth, you, you just you know who you are and you feel really strong on the inside. So that's Sovereign's message, one of Sovereign's messages, but all wrapped in, all wrapped into what her main message is, is just like being, putting your soul first, listening to your soul, being in constant communication. What do we want for this afternoon? What, do we, what would be better than that? What would be worth it? What would we really feel really, really, really good? Um, and after her comes Bloom. Now, Bloom came to me <laughs> through a walk I was on and she was in a massive, Amelia bush just laden with these pink flowers and blooms really playful you couldn't put her in a box if you tried she is unapologetic she's cheeky she's naughty she's her energy is very bouncy if you feel into her energy it's very bouncy and she's just she's on a ride of her life you know nobody's gonna bonsai her or clip her or or um, tell her how to be that's what I mean when she says she's unapologetic she's just like she just keeps growing like all of us you know who are talking to the dragons we just keep growing just keep growing just keep growing just keep growing and you don't know where you're going to end up <laughs> and her message is often just like again to do with your feelings and she, but she gives you like the she says there's so much more beyond love so a lot of humans are talking about, you know, love, 528 kilohertz, got to get to love. It's, you know, where you're empowered and get rid of everything else. I mean, she's saying there's just an equal amount above love. Love is just the beginning. You know, this is just where your doors open. You know, you've got the enlightenment, you've got bliss, you've got joy, you've got exuberance, like ecstasy, all of that, sort of all, all above that. So she's always wanting to kind of heighten your awareness about what else is possible. Like to be, you know, when you go walking and you see a sunset or you see a flower and you're just captivated by it. So you're in awe of nature. So Bloom is the pink dragon and she's like just in awe, you know, in awe of yourself. We, the dragons, are in awe of you humans as you grow. Mm. But there's a feeling that goes with that. So we can say the word, but we don't take it from here into here. Just like to feel how in awe you are. You know, if you go on a walk or you go somewhere beautiful and you can't stop taking pictures because you love it so much. Because you want to you want to capture it somehow and you want to hold it because or you walk into a house and you go, I love this house. I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. So there's there's a different kind of vibrancy and experience. And that's that's balloon. And whenever I show the cards to anyone, they're saying, oh, I love bloom. I'm like, yeah, <laughs> she's so playful. 
She sounds gorgeous. Yeah, she really is. She's very girly and she's very playful and she's very cheeky. The two dragons after that ceremony is a rainbow dragon. Ceremony is showing you how far you've come. He's showing you, and I say she and he, but dragons have no <laughs> you know, like angels or anything else. They, they, they have no preference. Like your soul, your soul is not a boy or a girl. It's just as it is, it's just a soul, the same as the dragons. So he's there because his energy is so <sighs> solid and so receiving. And as you walk under the rainbow that he provides, it's like, look at all the stuff that we've released. Look at all the work we've done. Look at, oh, and you get to this, you go under the filters of the rainbow and you get to the edge and you kind of go, I've done it. I'm doing it. I know how this works now. So even if something came up, I'd know how to structure it i'd know how to deal with it i know to i know how to cope i know how to operate as a human to get through this on another level so this is where ceremony comes in and then once you jump off the cliff you're in utopia now when i met utopia i was like why aren't you landing why are you just up there like hovering and bright 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 sunshine just so so bright and she was saying, well, I, I represent that you never land on the earth ever again in the same in the same way. So I never land. So when you've come under the rainbow and you fly off the edge of the cliff, nothing's the same. So you don't look at the ground the same. You don't look at the people the same. You, you come at it from a completely different perspective. And it's like you're on the world, but you're not of the world and the dragons laugh and they say you humans are so amazing you know people in 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 the past they would go up into the mountains to get used to all this high frequency work they disappear and they just you know live in nature and and you know not be in amongst other people <laughs> you're raising kids you're running a business you're doing the shopping you're driving your car you're washing the dishes and you're raising yourself through all these different frequencies. There is so much respect. <laughs> wow. <laughs> it's, a, it's a journey. It's the journey of the soul. Mm. And, the, and the dragons are there in my thunder of dragons, my team of dragons, my collective are there to help you navigate through the human stuff so that you can operate in a completely different way and look at things differently because if you get stuck in the mud you're not going anywhere and you're no good to anyone so true can you show us some of the cards some of those pictures were beautiful show us a okay show us um a tempt us <laughs> <laughs> Okay, yeah, so I told I told you just before we went on to record about how I found, so these cards came through in a series of interviews that I had with Serafina, the golden dragon. And then slowly after that, the other dragon started popping up and saying, I want to be part of this, I want to be part of this. And anyway, it ended at eight dragons. So first of all, we have... Seraphina, which I was telling you about, and her whole purpose as the golden dragon, the matriarch, is to ask you what it is that you want. And then you have Tara, which I was telling you about, which is the dragon that I met on the beach when the dog ran over and wanted to play with us because we were in conversation. You probably know that yourself. If you're ever feeling really in love and really just loving life, the animals around you act differently, don't they? Yeah, they do. And then we've got Raphael, the professor, who wants so much detail. He's a just silver, silver, great, great dragon. Came next, Luna Ray. Luna Ray is just, yeah, she's like, well, Moon Rays, Luna Ray. She is a wingless, pearlescent, kind of a snake dragon. And if you were to touch her, she's just muscle. Oh, she's so soft, but she's pearlescent. Again, her whole purpose is to help you get into 
your feelings. Sovereign, purple dragon, all to do with bringing your soul into play, your soul journey, finding your natural home, finding your, your frequency, so that it doesn't matter wherever you are, whatever you're doing, you can always say, and this is a good one, please show me how much you love me, which humans want a lot. So you can get the sensation of how much you are loved. And then when you're in that sensation, it just, everything else just works out so much better for you. And you can ask that a million times a day. They don't care. Mm. Please show me how much you love me. Bloom is the um, pink playful dragon who came to me in this great big untamed, unapologetic camellia bush. And she's there to help you understand just how playful you could be. Life should be more full of joy. Ceremony, the rainbow dragon. And then utopia, just pure sunshine when you just, you never see things the same way again. So there's 64 cards. And I read these cards out most weeks in my group. And you can pick a card. And they, they highlight what's in your subconscious, what your soul already knows. So whatever's going on for you, they will have a solution. And I find when I when I kind of transcribed, so this is the little book that goes with it, when I transcribed a lot of the messages and things, I keep thinking, God, they're, they're really long. But it's not the words that they, they want you to really grasp. That's why I've recorded a lot of the cards on YouTube. Um, it's more the essence that you feel and the messages that you get as you're immersed in listening to the card so they're in a different category they're not tarot cards they're not necessarily oracle cards but they're really a personal journey to see what's going on for you and allow the dragons to come in at that particular time and ignite something different to help open you up to help activate you to help you see things from a different perspective so they don't say do a set of four cards they just say Try and just pick one card, but even if I read four cards on a Monday, there's there's usually a theme. So like last week might have been um, self-worth. The, the week before, for a lot of people, I would have heard safety. Or, you know, there's often a theme to do with humans as to what's being processed en masse. Um, but, yeah, you can, you can use these cards to sort of... Um, get answers for yourself and just find out what the next step is and along with that there are exercises so I've got a course in practical magic which goes along with the book which basically gives you exercises how to spring clean how to move energy out um how to transmute the energy you know like when Luna Ray was saying about even good and bad energy it's all the same it's just energy so there's exercises all the way along in A Course in Practical Magic. At the moment in the Dragon Portal, that's where I have a little group going on. So we, we have calls every week to help people just move, move forward, really, and just to see what's, what's going on, what's going on in their um, subconscious, in their soul. What does their soul already know? Beautiful. I love it. The They're huge, though. Yeah. The rainbow one. <laughs> Something about the rainbow one got me. Ah, okay. Uh, I'm not sure why. I was in, I was actually in Peru recently, and uh, I was, we were doing a uh, a painting day, and so I thought I'm going to paint the mountains. And then, and as I was doing that, I was like, no, you need to add a rainbow dragon in. So I painted a rainbow dragon. So yeah, I'm going to have to get your cards and uh, read the little book and find out all about the rainbow dragon. Yeah, I definitely. He's really there to, to show you how far you've come. It's a celebration. Mm, yeah. And I don't I mean, think they say you humans don't celebrate enough about, especially when we've been doing this kind of work. We just keep plodding on and things keep changing and you get a new idea for something and think, oh, I could do that then. Yeah, it's true. It's true. We don't stop and celebrate enough. Yeah, I definitely don't. Yeah. Hmm. It's funny, isn't yeah, it, when so you think you're on a spiritual path and then, and yet you don't take time. I remember once I was doing coaching 
and everything just dried up just you know no calls no just like it's weird so I asked what it was and they said well we can't really send you anyone unless you clean your energy regularly (laughs) and I was like oh yeah I haven't have I and they're like "Mm, no like okay because I was I wasn't belittling it but I just I thought I was stronger than that I just didn't think it was you know because it's invisible you don't think it affects you but it's like great because what I find is the dragons are so forthright they're so straight yeah so interesting isn't it where the cards will will activate certain people you know some people like oh oh, bloom really speaks to me or no this week I want to choose this one or and you just say about the rainbow one so if people want to get hold of these cards with what's the place for them to to go to is it your, they your website? are they're about to go on amazon so you can order mm-hmm. them on amazon and you'll be putting you'll be uh there'll be a link yeah so it's like it's like like that <laughs> so these are my prototype ones and they are they are on Amazon, so they will be on Amazon. And I've also got a booklet there called "On the Breath of a Dragon," which were the first transcripts of an interview with Serafina. And beautiful. More in- more interviews will be coming transcribed for all of the dragons. So, like, there's quite a lot <laughs> about how they came through busy. and the questions we asked. Yeah, yeah. Sure. And of course, they're on Amazon. They'll be available worldwide as well. So yeah, exactly. Sort of at the moment, everything's books. in English, but I mean, I'm sure it'll be translated at some point because the dragons, the dragons are guiding me, even to do with choosing or finding the artist. So for for many many weeks, as I was getting closer and closer to the end of getting them finished, um, you know, putting who which that that dragon. I'm just, I needed someone to depict what I saw you know and that's kind of difficult because I I can do art but it wasn't what I wanted and yeah. I was saying well where's the artist and, and I thought okay well I'll do one of the exercises that I know I'll feel into the energy of that artist I'll feel into the energy of that artist and I'll see you know does it feel right because I do readings I can feel into people's energy and I can feel whether it's a yes or a no or a maybe so I put this this artist that I've seen brilliant artist very expensive and I was like is it this artist they were like "Mm, no okay is it is it this artist and I call that energy is it that artist Mm, no okay no is it that artist no I'm like I don't know anyone I haven't seen anyone else please show me you know how please show me where to go how to do this because you know we want to have an artist who can do because you want just the eye you just want the eye you don't want a whole dragon you just want the eye because it's the eye that makes the connection and when the dragons look at you and they say do you know how much we love you for doing the work you're doing so it had to be the messages had to come through the eyes so there I just got the message keep looking straight ahead I'm just like, well, that doesn't mean anything. Like, okay. So I carried on with my day and I was about to shut my computer down and I just trolled again through Facebook or something and this advert came up. And I thought, oh, he's an artist, but he's not that kind of artist. He's like, he does couples and kids and dogs. and But I had said I wanted somebody young and I wanted somebody, you know, that I could grow with. And then maybe he could use his kind of art to sort of make the whole dragon and then, you know, depict different scenes. So I said, is this the person? I just got, I got a yes. And I was like, okay, well, he's French. So I'm going to have to, every single conversation, I have to translate it. And anyway, so I contacted him and he said, yeah, sure. Do you want me to do um, a prototype? And so you see if you're happy with it. And then, so the dragons found the artist that they wanted to depict them. Beautiful. And I'm almost I, I, not allowed to go and do yeah. things in the standard way anymore. Mm. The dragon way. <laughs> yeah, the dragon way. And that was that was a phrase that came out maybe a couple of weeks ago now about this whole 
it's the dragon way. It's like, it's our way or no way. Well, they know best, don't they? In the day. They know what's needed for humanity to progress and to grow. Mm. And they, they've been saying to me for about a year now, it's like zero tolerance. And I'm like, what are you referring to? Zero tolerance. And they were kind of, it's zero tolerance to go back into victim. It's zero tolerance to go back into self-doubt. It, but, you know, as humans, we do. Also because we feel it from other people or we're triggered or something like that. So zero tolerance to go back into all those human ways. And you and I were both saying before that the dragons come through and, and say, that's such a human way to look at things. And it's true. So it's a zero tolerance to, to go back into doing things in the low energy ways, in the, they call us <laughs> Neanderthal, in our, in our language, in our feelings, in our limited spectrum of emotions and actings. But I'm loving the fact that this is a potential home for the dragons, as in a dragon family. Yeah, they're certainly pulling uh, lots of different humans together and each of those humans is coming with a different sort of version and variety of dragon and, and it's amazing to see and everyone's got this beautiful story that's uh, very special just to them and they're each person's coming in with a, a different type of set of dragons yeah so, and different qualities and different gifts yeah and it's it's what i'm getting is that the dragons they want to be known as real yeah definitely and the more people that talk about them in, in so many different ways, but with the same, I think the underlying is the same, that they are so benevolent and they're so loving and they so want the best for humanity. And, you know, any of the books that we've read as we went on our spiritual journey about, you know, this is going to be the time of great change. And that's why we're here. So we have to suck it up. <laughs> We do. Yeah, made all my hand, hair stand up. You're saying <laughs> means you're speaking a full truth. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And it's it's great to experiment with other people. You know, like whether it's dragon light language or I had a reading from someone the other day in my group, and she said, "Oh, I've just seen you in the middle of nowhere, just talking nonsensical stuff." And I went, "All oh, right, yeah, I know what that is then." <laughs> I'm going to get back to my dragon language <laughs> and I've, I've got a group of ladies in in a course in practical magic and I'm you know some of them are artists and they've got dragons coming through in their art and their art is changing color and one of the ladies is now singing as she's doing her art you know just just doing her voice stuff and I'm like incredible yeah it's a beautiful time to be alive it and is. of course we chose around now didn't we so we we knew it was going to be a beautiful time with lots of change and lots of lots of change really. yeah and if anybody's got kids as well i mean one of the books i have been asked to write after this one's out is um the cosmic parents because i feel the dragons are cosmic parents they're our as adults but we're not adults cosmic parents because who could possibly you know be a parent or expect your parents to give you all the love and affection that you wanted when they came in with all their stuff to get mm. rid of. So we all need cosmic parents to look after and guide us because mm. there's a lot of stuff to go through. Yeah. So my boys have their soul. They, have, they knew their soul from age six, five, six. Um, and it's a conversation quite openly in our house. It's like when they're struggling with someone, I said, well, if you ask Jake, if you ask Dobby, if you ask your soul, like, and, you know, I hear it back and I go, yeah, I have. Yeah, I have. I'm like, OK, well, just just trust that it's working and then just keep clear about what it is that you're looking for. Mm -hmm. And some of the stories that they've told me that that they've been helped with, I'm like, how did you do that? You know, because they're being guided. Oh, oh, so much as, you know, we were doing, because um, <clears throat> we live in France, so my partner's French, and he was 
reading out something in French to myself and my two boys. Dic- dictation. <clears throat> and he, he was marking it afterwards and he said, how on earth did you know that word? That is such an old fashioned French word. It's a long word, but you spelt it perfectly. How can you? You're six, you know. And this was a few years ago. And so Rio didn't say anything. He's like, mm, can't say anything. And he said, Mummy, do you want to know how I did it? When I was in the car the next time, I said, I'd love to know how you did it. He kept saying, how do you write this word? How do you write this word? How do you write this word? And he said, he saw it written on the wall. (laughs) Wow. And he said, so I just copied it. I was like, don't disbelieve you. That's awesome. And he talks to animals, which I've encouraged. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And when we play games as a, as a family, you know, like when you have um, the name of somebody written on your forehead. Mm-hmm. Um, I do it, but I'm teaching them how to do it too. Like if you play Monopoly, but if you play a game, you can ask to feel into who the character is. So we're playing different kind of games in our house <laughs> so that I can keep the spirit alive of these two amazing humans yeah that, that's the future isn't it that's the future of keeping that childhood spirit alive through into adulthood because we all we we lose it those of us on the spiritual journey remember start to remember it that's for sure i'm hoping that they never forget it i know that my children's children mm-hmm. they physically look very different because i've been given a glimpse they physically look very different to how we look because they basically don't carry around the baggage of all the hurts and all the emotions and all the grief and all the, that we've, we're, we're in the process of, of jettisoning off. They yeah. just don't. I mean, my son came home from school the other day with a massive headache and I said, what's going on? He said, oh, mummy said, I'm going to go upstairs and do a clearing. Okay, you're talking my language, but we've never spoken about this. I said, so what exactly do you do? And he goes, well, I just sit there and think about the thoughts and kind of like, don't need that thought anymore, get rid of that. Don't need any more of that, get rid of that. Don't need to hold on to that, get rid of that. And I'm like, whoa, really? That's amazing. I said, and then what do you do? And he goes, well, I just choose, decide what I do want to feel. And I put that in. I'm like, that's (laughs) awesome. (laughs) You know, and they didn't, he didn't get it from me, even though, you know, I am the little witch in the house, but they know this stuff. Mm. my job to hopefully keep it open so one of the books I have to write is about how you play the games that keeps the soul alive Mm. and if that was came from the dragons that they definitely want that because the next generations need to be progressing in a big way yeah definitely I mean you must see lots of people as well you know the amount of stuff that we have to get rid of. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's a lot. <laughs> yeah. We're yeah. working our way through it. We're, we're winning. That's the important thing. That's we have to keep remembering that. How, like we say, how far have we come and celebrate that? And say, yeah. yeah, we're doing we're doing well. Yeah. We really are. And it's interesting, isn't it? If you look back and you think, oh, where did I come from? What was I feeling? What? How was I reacting? Mm. And then when you look back, you go, oh, I just don't I just don't feel that anymore. I don't have that in my in my energy anymore. It's gone. Yeah. So that's the purpose. And anything, you know, I I am anything. I mean, they talk about law of attraction and, and you know, parking places or something like that, which of course most of us like to play with. Okay. Um, the- so I decide how else can I play with this? Um so threading a needle, I just, I couldn't see the end of the needle, couldn't see the thread going through, even with my glasses, I'm like, this is not working. You can see this, please thread this for me, please do it for me. Every single time for the last 10 years I've been doing this and it works. So there's a game for everybody to try that. Uh, if, if you can't thread a needle, it's just like, do you know what? I can't see this, but you can. So guide my hands and let it be threaded. And when you realize you can do little things like that it's like yeah yeah that's it isn't it little things then you start to realize you can do bigger and bigger things and 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 play with it i always get that magic is real 
It's true. Yeah, 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 yeah. In the parking space and 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 all the other things. I use my dragons to assist me with uh, whenever I travel. I imagine the three of them, one one in front, one above, and one behind, and, and they just clear things out of the way. And oh, I love that you do that. Yeah, and I do that too. I see the accidents and I'm like, oh, look, <laughs> nice and smooth. Yeah, yeah, I do that. I When I'm in an aeroplane, I ask a dragon to come along and, and be guard. And if my boys, because they're, they're the age in France, they ride a little scooter. Yeah, yeah. And it gets me very nervous sometimes. I'm just like, okay, I'm setting a dragon and it's going to be, just tell me when you get there. <laughs> and and they're always fine, but they're, I just, this peace of mind that they're in this bubble and and the dragon is with them. Yeah, yeah, they're definitely there. I mean, there's so many stories I'm, I hear. But they do people. need to be asked. Oh, yeah, yeah, exactly. You, you need to be, and, and people are afraid to, that they're asking too much. You can't ask too much of the dragons. This unconditional love. They, it's like your, your dog. Your dog will, will play ball with you forever. <laughs> it yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. The dragons will answer and help forever. They really will. Hence, hence what I'm hearing again there is like, please show me how much you love me. You can ask that. They've just said you can ask that a million times. We just don't mind. We never get bored. We never get bored of you asking that. Yeah. I think that's. I think that's just amazing, and that's the kind of you know the love that humans need. Yeah. Galactic parents. I'm going to take that one. Cosmic parents, I should say. Yeah. 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 Exactly. They're there for us forever. Yeah, as, as our human parents are. Yes. Yeah. And you, then you go back and be a dragon yourself. You mentioned about being a dragon rider. Do you feel that you have been a dragon rider? Uh, the, when they said, when it, the dragon rider bit came out and I, I sort of asked them, what is a dragon rider? And they, they say, we just use, they use the word rider just to literally say that there's that connection with us. So you, Communicating. You may, yeah. You may not physically sit on a dragon and ride it. Yeah. Um, However, I do. I, I, I'll, when I go on my shamanic journeys, uh, I'll just say, "I just fancy I spin around and we go, we go into the lower realms and we go flying off and upside down and loop the loop." It's, oh, it's amazing. I love it. And yeah. And then they're like, "Well, you can just fly yourself," and they let me go. And I'm like, yeah. oh. and Then you fly yeah. yourself. And you're like, wow, I'm flying. <laughs> they're like, "Push can, yeah. push can." <laughs> Don't yeah. limit yourself with that human. It, yeah. Way. When you realise that you can do those kind of things, and of course, there's not very many places where we get to talk about those kind of things. Mm. you know about the magic that you did you know like if I if I say I want to go and visit my dad and my dad lives in South Africa this was years ago I saw myself going and flying on the continent and all the rest I saw myself flying you know mm. when you're little you have these ideas that you can fly yeah, yeah. and I remember sitting outside with him and he just received bad news in a letter mm -hmm. and uh, it didn't go any further than that so I came back but I contacted him, contacted him the next day um, and he just got you know bad health scare and all the rest of it and I said I saw you in a dream I thought that was the best way I could possibly <laughs> <laughs> approach the subject <laughs> yeah and there is so much and I think you know that's why I, I wrote and journaled about some of the some of the things that I magically created for the book Practical Magic because if I hadn't it's just like oh, I would have forgotten about that and you're right about you you there's you can't ask too much when i created this house mm -hmm. i asked for well, my partner and i'm moving in together he's got two boys i've got two boys so the number of bedrooms how the kitchen was laid out flat garden he wanted a dead end street he wanted a big garage for his um mechanics we want i wanted to be cyclable to the beach um, I wanted a possibility so that I could do studios, so that I could invite people here to do detox for the soul retreats, to build another one, to do the garden. Da, da, da. Anyway, when you know we started looking for a house, I was already selling the other house, and I sold the house with magic as well. But when we found the house and we came, we went, oh, and we wanted a separate quarter just for us, so like an adult, no kids zone. You know, their own bathroom, my office in the bedroom and, you know, our own toilet and everything. But they've got all upstairs. That's that's the boy's own <laughs> Bermuda Triangle. When you find it and you kind of go, we got the dead end street, we got the big garage, we got the kitchen laid out, we got a flat garden, we got a cyclable to the beach, we got a separate zone for us, we got, you know, the availability for the building a studio and and 
all the things you kind of go I thought I was being greedy I thought I was asking for too much <laughs> yeah. yeah and That's this is where really Raphael nice. comes in and he says about yep. the details yeah yeah we, we don't do that like you say we're lazy we, we, we just say I want a lovely house yeah, yeah I want to move to this this town yeah. okay. that doesn't help me most does it yeah okay. Yeah, and, and they're, they're, they want, I get always get that, they're, they're always interested in what we want, and they want to help if they can. Yeah, yeah, they do. And, you know, for me, for a while, I was like, well, why would something so amazing want to help humans? And they're like, have you any idea how proud we are and like how much in love we are with you? And we're here because we know it's tough and the kind of stuff that you're doing is different and you're going to be looked at differently. and you know all this witch wound and all the rest of it sort of comes up from the previous lives so we're here mm. to support you through all of that yeah keep asking keep communicating um i had a funny story the other week and um, we were going to i mean my french is okay but it's not okay in a in a big group anyway we were going to some friend's house and it was going to be a french afternoon because they don't speak any english I'm like, okay fine and um, I was like, oh, sometimes I don't really want to go. You know, it's like, it's hot. at my end of the day, my head's like, oh. <laughs> I went, I know what I need. I need a French dragon. Oh. Hmm. I've never asked for that before. I need a French dragon. Yeah. So I thought, okay, well, I need a French dragon. Don't need to know your name, but I just need to be able to be listened to, not talked over articulate, be able to pronounce things correctly, have decent conversation, have a nice afternoon, um, pleasant, you know, be a part of conversations and everything else. So the day went and it was it was easy. And on the way home, I said to my partner, you must be really proud of me. And he goes, I am. He said, you spoke French all afternoon. He said, you zoned off from time to time, but that's OK. I said, do you want to know what I did? And he went, uh, don't know do I want to know what you did I said well I called in a French dragon and he went oh okay <laughs> <laughs> and I totally believe that it completely changed my afternoon mm. and you can call them in for anything it's a good idea and it isn't it a good idea and the thing is unless people say what they're using and what they're doing yeah. how do you know that that's even possible yeah. I'm going to try that one. Yeah, do. <laughs> I guess did my accounts, I'll call in one that's good at maths. <laughs> um, I needed to call in a lawyer for the IP, intellectual property for the dragons, for yeah. like their names and all the rest of it. And I was like, oh. and I was like, no, this has come up for a reason. So but how do I talk to a lawyer about dragons? How do I, how do I do that? And I was speaking to a girlfriend of mine, she was in Australia, and I said, you know, I'm looking for an IP lawyer. She goes, oh, I, 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 might, I know someone who does that. I said, right, okay, let's just see if we have a copy. Do you want me to be on the call as well? And I said, yeah, yeah, you can introduce me. And I said, then, then I'm good to go. So we talked about it, and I was kind of like, <clears throat> anyway, I've got these cars and this book that I'm producing, and it's about dragons. And so I went through the whole, you know, introduction of the dragons and everything. And at the end of the call, he said to me, you want to know how many dragons I've got in the next room. <laughs> and he was a huge fan of Dungeons and Dragons and he really great storyteller and he was just into the dragons. And I was like, what's the chances of finding the lawyer <laughs> who can do that for you, who was really into the dragons? And I've spoken to him since and he's, he's great. You know, he kind of really understands that making the invisible visible. Yeah, yeah. But what's the they chances so you ask they had it planned out for you yeah yeah, yeah it's only me that doesn't believe it <laughs> sometimes yeah sometimes you have to pinch yourself does magic really work or it does <laughs> yeah there is magic in this world you, mm. you get to know how to live with it and how to make it work for you yeah and the dragons are just they just they just keep getting more astonishing for me and what they feed back to me is just like, wow.
Beautiful. Well, it's been amazing meeting you <laughs> and all your dragons. Thank and you. Uh, I'm sure everyone else feels the same. And uh, I'm sure there'll be a lot of people clamoring to get a hold of your cards and to come on your courses. So you say all the, all the links will be shared here. So. They just want to be used. They want to be asked. They want to for you to understand how you can make life your life easier. And they, they help you navigate through. So I'm, I'm, I'm in service to the dragons. I'm a dragon messenger. Beautiful. And thank you for listening to your calling. I'm sure other people are getting called and not making such strides to go ahead and do things. So thank you for listening to your calling thank to do you. the Dragon Summit. I receive that. Thank yeah, you. do. <laughs> yeah, because I know what you said before, it's like, huh? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm still like, what am I doing? But it's working. And the dragons are here all the time. Beautiful. Thank you. Thank you.